Right, so we go to now the fifth technology, heat pump dryers. This is interesting and this is applied more and more widely nowadays. Now this is for example a system of drying uh, heat pump drying machines. This is at Nong Lam Food Company. So this is a drying chamber, just a normal drying chamber like the other technology. But here they have mechanical refrigerator, a cooling system, mechanical refrigerator, like a fridge or like an air, con air conditioner at your room at home, for example. Like, like a system like that, a long system like this, we have two refrigerator, the other side as well, but here you don't see, just opposite. So the air will move along the food and will go out and will go into the exchange of heat with the cooling system, with the refrigerator and then the air is out and in contact with the food. Exactly this system have like this. It's, there's a division in the middle and here you have a, a mechanical refrigerator, here you have a another mechanical refrigerator like that right and then here you put the trolleys of your food now the air is moved here to take the vapor from and then the air is now going to exchange the heat with the refrigerator then this air is actually cooled down and the vapor in the air condensate into liquid and then they have somewhere here to connect so you see that the water is flowing out and then this air now move here and heat it a little bit and then introduce into another part of the system and then dry food here and then go into the second refrigerator to do the same thing like here and move here so basically, they can design a system that the air just move around. The air, we don't need fresh air even. But in our, some other system, some, they have to calculate. They take some part of fresh air and they remove some part of the used air and so on. Then it's depend on the design. Okay, so what is that again? Just move around like this. And then we see the principle in the next slide. This is the principle. This is a drying chamber. It's actually it's larger in reality, but we just make it small here, so we see. Now the air is introduced into the food and that take the water vapor from the food. And then here the air is introduced here. Maybe the temperature of the air here can be like for example 40 degrees C or 35 degrees C or whatever. And then this is the cooling system. This is the refrigerator. You can review again chapter 6 in Food Engineering 2 in Vietnamese to know about the principle of a mechanical refrigerator. But basically, this system have a what? Evaporator, compressor, condenser, and expansion van. So there is a refrigerant a refrigerant like a for example Freon 22 that go along that is circulate continuously in the cooling system in the refrigerator but it is in the changing phase all the time from liquid to vapor the refrigerator the refrigerant inside the cooling, I'm talking inside the cooling, not about the air of the drying yet. And then, for example, here, after evaporation, the refrigerants become gas. And then this gas is compressed. The refrigerants now is compressed. The pressure is high now because it's compressed. When the pressure is high, then it will go into the condensation. The gas now become the liquid, right, the liquid. And now when the liquid go past the expansion fans, means that it will increase in volume expansion. 
increase in volume means drop down in pressure. When the pressure is lower, then it will evaporate. Let's go to the evaporator here. It will evaporate from liquid into gas again. So the refrigerant inside the system keep changing all the time, liquid, gas, liquid, gas, and gas, liquid, and so on, all the time. And then in the evaporator of the system, because the liquid is converted into the gas, mean this is, this process is endothermic, means that it uptake energy, absorb energy, right? It need energy to evaporate. Now, we introduce our output air from the drying chamber into exchange with the evaporation of the refrigerant. So the refrigerant will uptake energy of the air to evaporate. It takes energy from the output air and like that, the temperature of the output air can drop down now to 20 degrees C or 15 degrees C, whatever the design is. Right, okay, and if you look here, the temperature is of the air, it dropped down inside this port. What happened? Why the condensation occur? Because if you remember, when the temperature is lower, then the relative humidity is increased. When it's increased to a hundred percent, and that you reach a point, you call it dew point, right? And then if you go further down below the dew point, for example, because this air has a high, uh, a very high humidity, relative humidity, so the dew point can be maybe 30 degrees C, but you go down below the dew point, so part of the vapor is condensated into liquid. It reach the point where the condensation occur in the air, right? And then the spot of the vapor become liquid. Then you can remove this liquid out. Now this air is blow further here and go into the exchange with the condenser of the cooling system. What is condenser? Condenser to with the refrigerant. The refrigerant inside the system will be converted from gas into liquid. And this process is exothermic, right? From you convert back from gas to liquid, then you release energy. Release energy, then that energy is absorbed by the air, right? And so the temperature of the air now increase again to higher temperature maybe 45 degrees C or 50 depending on what value do you set okay. increase again and as you know that when we increase the temperature we reduce the relative humidity so here the relative humidity here become low again maybe become 30 percent again the temperature is warm, it's higher, the relative humidity is lower, means the air is drier. Now you can introduce this air, blow this air into drying chamber to take water vapor from the food again. Now if we look at the cy uh, psychromatic chart, if you have a psychromatic chart like this, okay. Now we have the point here, I may assume that this point, this point, okay. This point is point A. We have point A, the temperature is 45 degrees C. Relative humidity is 30%. Now you introduce in to the drying. Dry in is what? Dry in is iso -anthan B. It will go along the line of anthan B. And ideally, the output is saturated mean that it's at 100% of relative humidity. So I would just assume now if I do, right? So here, not 95, but 100%. The air is saturated, mean it's uptake maximum amount of vapor from the food. Okay, but maybe to 95. I would just do just 95 to see. 95 somewhere here, right? Percent. 
I will just change this back to 95 so you can see it's better right and now what happened when this air is at this temperature now I put it here 40 is difficult to draw but anyway somewhere here so you have the temperature maybe 40 degrees C now it will go to exchange the heat with the evaporator heating and cooling will go the horizontal line if you remember heating will go to the right cooling will go to the left and now this is cooling because you lower the temperature you go to the left but now you reach already the saturation and this is the dew point dew point temperature right now the temperature now is lower down to 20 degrees c up here maybe is 35 the dew point is 35 or i said it before 30 35 maybe just assume that is 35 degrees c now but the temperature is go down further so it will go this direction right okay because you cannot go beyond the saturation let's go like that and then the temperature here is 20 so you have now 20 degrees c and now you go into the heat exchange with the condenser the temperature now is increased back to 45 increase temperature horizontal line now you go back to point a right excuse me and then point a so you hit here point b you have here C, you have here D, and then you go back to A. Just the principle for you to understand, right? So what do you see? I would take another color. Right, here from point C to point D, there is the drop in absolute humidity. The drop in absolute humidity means, what does that mean? Part of the vapor is removed from the air condensation so when you remove this condensate you lower the absolute humidity of this air okay and then after that you heat it up a bit you reduce the relative humidity and then you can try it again yes so when you understand from here we can go further this is just uh, to expand the principle but in reality it a little bit more complicated this is more like realistic now the chamber the air is just passed through the same it's uptake the water vapor from the food and now they really they remove a little bit the heat air out they just remove part of it and here one third of the rest of the air is going to the heat exchange with the evaporator and two thirds will not go through that one will not go to exchange because what when we go to the drying chamber if you remember drying chamber is very large need a lot of air velocity of air so you cannot just bring all of that air into the exchange with the evaporator which is smaller so you only take one third of it you go to here and then you have the condensation you remove part here so now you in introduce a new air from just the surrounding air and now you combine with this air and you bring it through here to increase the temperature but here for example now if you increase to 45 degrees C it's so it's enough energy to do that but sometimes some people want to try faster to set it to 60 degrees C 55 degrees C so you need some extra heater to heat it up further because only the heat from the condenser is not enough to bring that up high temperature. Okay, it's actually, it can bring up high, but it just keep the air inside. It, if it will not take the fresh air outside and it will dry slower, then it can heat it up after a long time. But if you use an extra heat, you can heat it up more easily and faster, right? Why the dry air is still fast, right? So, at home can you try to draw this on the graph I think you can draw this actually so in order to draw this on the psychromatic chart you have to remember the process heating cooling the process drying and the process mixing uh, you mix you see you mix the air together 
this the temperature here is still like 30 the temperature here is what is that it's lower like 20 you mix together you increase and you heat it again okay so try at home to draw this process on the psychromatic chart maybe i will give an exam like this for you to draw i just give two condition at each point if you remember if you know two properties to condition you can draw points on the chart so what are the advantages of this system this system you can adjust the temperature and the relative humidity independently actually you can adjust independently for the conventional system you normally adjust the air but this one you can even adjust the relative humidity of the air inside not only the temperature because the air is drier so you can dry product faster and because the air is drier so you don't need to maintain high difference in temperature you can dry at lower temperature because you have a good gradient in pressure in vapor pressure between the food and the air you have a this one is good then you don't need to increase a lot of temperature again you can dry product for a shorter time you can dry for a product for a lower temperature and this bowl you have better quality of the products it's good for the product for the nutrient bioactive component which are sensitive to heat then you can do this method for example they apply for uh, herbs for example for the the herbs to make medicine they want to preserve good component for some fruit they want to maintain high vitamin c and so on so they can do this system right and normally the air is blow very strongly so they 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 introduce a lot of fan inside actually strongly so means that the dry in is uniform I mean you don't need to have to change the trays change the toilets all the time you just put everything inside and wait up to it's finished by itself uniform but of course what are the disadvantages is the investment the price is very high it can be three times four times of the normal hot air drying system much more expensive and it's consumed more energies of course because you see a lot of parts that need energy more energy the operation is higher the investment is higher but then the quality is better so it depends your option to choose good so we take a short break before we go to the last two